What's up, Taiwan? I'm Sani Chi with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Four men have been arrested in Hong Kong for supporting people wanted by China. They're charged with conspiring to collude with a foreign country or external elements. The charges carry a life sentence. The arrests come days after Hong Kong posted 125,000 US dollar bounties on eight pro-democracy advocates living in exile abroad. The arrests are part of an ongoing crackdown on Hong Kong's democracy movement. 260 people have been arrested under the city's sweeping national security law in the past three years. Taiwan has long served as a haven for Chinese distance. The country currently has a yellow alert on travel to China, urging citizens to reconsider their travel plans. Taiwan is opening a third representative office in India as the two countries deepen ties. The foreign ministry says it is working to open the Taipei Economic and Cultural Center in India's financial hub, Mumbai. Taiwan already has offices in New Delhi and Chennai. Taiwan says the new center will provide consular services and help to expand bilateral trade and investments. It also aims to promote cooperation between India and Taiwan in science and technology, education and culture. Taipei hasn't said when the office will open. The U.S. is keeping a close eye on a proposal to shorten mandatory military service in Taiwan. The idea is part of a KMT presidential candidate, Ho Yo E's platform. John Van Triest has the story. It's another busy week of campaigning for Kuomintang presidential hopeful Ho Yo E. At this Temple Wednesday, Ho made a fresh appeal for support as he lags in the polls. One proposal he hopes will turn the tide is keeping military conscription brief. From next year, all eligible men will have to do a year of service, up from the current four months. That's due to tensions with China, which claims Taiwan and vows to use force to take it if needed. Ho now says he'll aim to bring back the four-month service period. The U.S. is monitoring what this could mean for Taiwan's military readiness. Washington sells Taiwan billions of dollars in arms and support to ward off a potential Chinese invasion. U.S. officials have spoken to Ho's campaign, and Ho himself has responded. Ho's campaign chief said the U.S. has approached Ho's camp, but he says it hasn't told Ho what to do. No surprise diplomacy. So Ho's idea remains on the table, but it's unclear if it will boost his popularity with voters or improve support within his own party amid persistent rumors some insiders want to replace him as the candidate. Klein Wong and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan is on course to produce more than 1,000 missiles this year, a new high. The threat it faces from China is one of the major reasons for the increased output. And as our reporter Jaime Ocon explains, it's part of the country's asymmetric defense strategy. If you're a nation like Taiwan, under threat of invasion from the world's largest navy, how do you defend yourself? And how do you prevent your authoritarian neighbor, just 150 kilometers away, from launching an amphibious invasion and landing on your shores? And the best way to do that is to attack a Chinese fleet at its most vulnerable point, and that is when it has troops embarked and it is trying to cross 100 miles of rough sea between the Chinese coastline and Taiwan. And anti-ship cruise missiles are the best way to do that. That's why Taiwan is investing more in its domestic missile development and production. But making missiles doesn't happen overnight. Taiwan has spent decades researching and producing the materials needed for these high-tech weapons. With a mature missile program, Taiwan has been ramping up production. For the past three years, output has been increasing steadily. 
Taiwan has made 500 missiles in 2021, 800 in 2022, and now it's on track to produce over 1,000 missiles this year. The country's largest weapons maker, the Zhongshan Institute, says they knew the military would need to increase its missile arsenal and planned ahead. This push by Taiwan for more missiles is a result of the threat it faces from China, which has a much larger military than Taiwan. It's part of what's called an asymmetric defense strategy, which means using smaller weapons to take out larger targets like tanks and warships. With more missiles available, Taiwan is able to conduct more live fire tests and practice how to use them in combat not only enhancing its defense, but also learning how to further improve these weapons. Justin Wu and Hami Okan for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan has set a new record for the amount of power generated by renewable resources. Its generation rate was over 20 percent for two days in a row. This means one-fifth of all electricity used then came from renewables. Taiwan has pushed for more investment in green energy for a decade. Renewables like solar and wind are fast becoming an important energy source during the country's hot summers. Taiwan's very own giant panda, Yunzai, turned 10 years old on Thursday. And to celebrate, her home zoo in Taipei threw her a lavish birthday party. Sally Yensen was there. Today is Panda Yuanzai's 10th birthday, and I'm at Taipei Zoo, where zookeepers have organized a special birthday celebration. Guests have shown up wearing all kinds of panda paraphernalia, writing birthday messages and singing happy birthday. Zookeepers have also made a special panda-friendly birthday cake. It's filled with fruits like pineapples, sugarcane, kiwis and carrots. But will Yuanzai eat her cake? <laughs> Maybe not. Still, fans are thrilled to see their favorite panda princess. Yuanzai is a child of what's known as panda diplomacy. She was born to parents Tuan Tuan and Yuan Yuan, two pandas China gifted to Taiwan in 2008. It was perhaps the most significant example of positive cross-strait relations this century, which some have called a propaganda move by Beijing. Some Taiwanese people say that despite being born here, Yuan Zai is technically not Taiwanese since her parents are Chinese. But Taipei Zoo believes panda protection doesn't need to be politicized. The extravagance of this celebration is really fitting for the conservation success story of one of the most endangered species on the planet. It also illustrates wildlife experts' concerns that Taiwan allocates vast amounts of money and resources towards a handful of pandas at the expense of other native protected species. But at today's celebration, the only thing that guests want is for Yuan Zai to have the best 10th birthday party ever and to let her eat cake. Kama Shu and Sally Jensen in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Finally today, we leave with images of a life-size Barbie dream house in California. I'm Sani Chi. Take care and see you next time.